This is a demonstration of some aspects of the process of installing Poplog on a Linux system. Um, in order to do that I have to prepare two directories and I will create them both in the user local directory which I've given myself in which I've given myself right permission. So I'll do cd slash user slash local now by default the poplog system will be installed in user local poplog so I don't need to create that directory it will be created but I'm going to create a directory in which I put the files that will be required for uh, installing poplog so I'll use mkdir poplog files and I go into that directory cd poplog files So right now there's nothing in this directory. It's empty. Um, now how do I get hold of Poplog? Well the easiest thing is to use a web browser. So I'm going to now bring a little Firefox window in here and in the search panel I'll type free Poplog as one word. Free Poplog and it gives me a collection of things of which the first item is free poplog AI tools and so on. So I'll select that and it takes me to the main free poplog page and that's got a lot of information which I'm mostly going to ignore except to select the downloads item and that takes me to a section that says there are download instructions for 32-bit Linux poplog which is what I'm going to use for version 15.65 which is the latest version created in end of December 2011. So that's taken me to this latest Poplog uh, web page and it's got some more information about examples and various things you can use but I'm now going to go to the instructions for downloading below. Now these instructions are given in some detail for users of Ubuntu and Debian systems and further down in a little less detail for users of Fedora. The main thing is that there are some things that you need to have. You need to have the GCC libraries and other things associated with it for compilation because Poplog will be uh, linked after you install it. Uh, it's useful to have the CSH or TCSH uh, package uh, because some of the older scripts in Poplog use that, although gradually they're being removed. There are some libraries for graphics, um, and this is their these are their names in the Debian format: libxx6 and the minus dev version: lib libx11, libxt and then an optional extension which is libmotiv3 or lestif. Uh, so that's for Debian users and for um, Debian unis users you can get them with the command apt-get install with a list of all those things. So this web page on installing tells Debian users things they need to fetch before they get Poplog installed and you can check that the libraries are there because there should be things in uh, the user lib directory of the form libx11.so, libxt.so, libxx.so and if you install motivalistive there'll be a libxm.so um, for Fedora you can ask for motif or motif minus devel or devel uh, the uh, Ubuntu version just has minus dev, Fedora versions have minus devel, and uh, the format you can use in Poplog is yum, yum install motif and motif devel, or yum install lestif and lestif devel. And these are the other things you need to have pre installed. So these things are there, and if you want to check that you've got them, the first thing you can do is fetch this script. So I'm going to now. Uh, do that. I could in OpenOffice ask it to save the link as a file and so on. Uh, not in OpenOffice, in um, Firefox, uh, the browser, but instead I'm going to copy the link location like that and then move the Firefox window out of the way and in here I'll use the wget wget 
command and that should fetch that file so now ls minus l I have it it's not it's called check Linux facilities it's not executable so I make it executable chmod change the mode um, and there are various ways of doing this and I just happen to know that 755 is a mode that will make it executable check I type ch and then the tab to finish and now if I repeat the ls minus l command it's not executable because it's got the x in there so I can execute it and see what happens so the way I do that is dot slash ch and the tab to finish um, and I'll make it output its um, uh, what it finds through the more command which means it'll just show me a page at a time and then I can scroll down oh, in fact it all managed to fit on one page uh, in the screen so I didn't need the more bit so it says it was checking for x11 libraries it looked in there and it found libx11.so good it looked for libxt.so found that that found that found that so all of those libraries are found it doesn't check for some of the other things but things like gcc and so on but those are usually available in a system set up for um, development work so um, I haven't checked that if you don't have uh, the compiler and linker available then you may get errors at a later stage during the installation so let's go back and see what else we need now um, the main thing that we want is a file to fetch and install everything so we now are going to continue looking through this uh, for the scripts which I happen to know are here uh, so there are single scripts get and install files for downloading 32-bit Linux poplog there's actually two of them there's one which is called get and install b get and install b poplog which will put things in the standard directory and install everything in the standard way in particular it puts it in user local poplog and it sets up various other links the other one allows you to put it anywhere on your in your file system and sometimes either because you don't have access to the uh, user local directories or because you want to temporarily set up something in another directory you can use this script but I'm going to get this one so as before I'll use the copy link location option in the um, Firefox browser and then I'll use wget to fetch it so I'll use W get and then with Linux I just middle click on the middle mouse button and that pastes in what I selected and I press W get and it's fetched it so I'll do ls minus L and I now have this get and in for install file I'll make it executable chmod change mode uh, 755 as before get and install right so now I'm ready to run that and what it's going to do is download some other things and put them in the subdirectory in particular it'll download a couple of additional scripts um, and it'll download a tar file which is about 16 megabytes because I have quite a fast virgin media connection which is about 30 megabits per second this will happen quite fast when I do it but people with a slower internet connection may have to wait longer for it to work so as before I will run this command get and install and you could also do that as super user if you wanted to make all the installation owned by the super user and you'd have to use sudo instead of just running the thing but I've given myself all the relevant permissions so I don't need to use sudo sudo so it's fetched some shell scripts it's fetched documentation files it's now got an install file and it's checking uh, the system which I've already done and now it's got the tar file which is version 16 and that 
came down pretty soon. Uh, and these things print out um, ways in which you can use the install file, but there's a default one that this one's going to use, and it's going to uh, install stuff in my directory. Well, it's now done it, and it tells you that there may be warnings. There's an install.log file, which is in a directory, which new directory that's been created. So let's see what's in this directory now, ls minus l. So the two scripts that I installed are still here, but it's created a subdirectory, so I'll go into that. cdv15.65. If I knew, now do ls minus l, it's got a documentation file, a readme.txt. It's brought down the check Linux facilities thing and made it executable, which I had already done in the previous directory. And it's got this script, which does a lot of work, and then it's fetched the tar file, this thing, which you can see is about 16 and a half megabytes. Um, and then it's run the install program to install it, and it's created a log file. Um, the install script can be run without any arguments, and then it just tells you what the options are. So if I do install, I type the first bit ins, and then the tab completes the command and it tells you stuff which has gone off the screen but the main thing is it gives you some examples of ways in which you can run it. You can run it saying um, install poplog to run with motif if you've got the motif libraries or the lstf libraries if you haven't you use the no motif for the first option there are three arguments. The second is the place for it to go and the w w it can go in a default location which is use a local poplog and it can set up some links to make it convenient to run or instead you can put it in another directory, like in your home directory, mypop, and not set up the links in the user local lib and user local man and so on. Alternatively, you can put it in some other place. Um, anyhow, the way it is run uh, by that script that I just ran is in this format. It uh, sets it up for motif, goes to the default location, use a local poplog, and it creates some links. Um, and there's ls minus l. There's an install.log file which has got a record of a lot of things that happen, and I'm just going to go through it very quickly. If I type more install.log, shows me a page at a time. So that's telling me stuff that is down, that it's um, unpacked and put in various places. Um, did some checking. I was happy with the checks. Um, it then installed, uh, un unpacked the tar file and installed it in user local poplog v15.65. And most of the stuff goes in the pop subdirectory. Uh, and that's a listing of what it found there. And then the various other things when it builds some of the saved images. So, in particular, it creates saved images for doing system building, system building uh, because Poplog can rebuild itself. So, it's creating um, Poplink, Poplib, Popsy uh, system building um, uh, saved images, and that all works. And there you can see that it's created some saved images which can be used later. And then it starts rebuilding um, a saved image for running Poplog. There's a startup thing. And then it uh, creates a um, prolog version. And it creates um, common lisp, running an MKC lisp. There's a mcplog, mcc lisp. So it's creating a common lisp saved image. And when it's finished that, it will create a um, PML. That's a standard ML. Uh, Poplog ML uh, system, and um, then it does various other things, um, creating um, uh, indexes in various do uh, documentation files, which I'm not going to look at now. So that happened on my system without any troubles. Um, the main thing to know is that if something goes wrong, then clues to what went wrong are usually in that install.log file and you may have to send the file to somebody who knows more about Poplog in order to get help 
uh, diagnosing the problem. So let's go and just have a look at what um, it did. In fact, one of the things that was printed out right after the installation, I'm now scrolling back the output in this Xterm window. Uh, can I go back far enough? Um, okay, I've... Um, yes, it says over here you can do CD to user local pop log, current pop log, bin demos, and then there are some <coughs> demonstrations. So I'll do that. CD slash user local pop log bin demos file directory. Oops, I left out a bit. Uh, user local pop log current pop log bin demos. Right, and that's mine as well. <coughs> so one of the um, demos is run Eliza. So if I do slash dot slash run Eliza it runs this chatbot which prints out good day what is your problem and I say I want to know if you now work and it says you're becoming one of my favorite friends and if I want to I can copy that and paste it back in as my answer and it says and what else besides coming one of your favorite friends well I won't test that any further it seems to work I'll type by ls minus l again and one of them is run speaking Eliza and that will work if you have eSpeak on your computer I have eSpeak eSpeak is Eliza there just to check that this works I'm going to turn up the volume a bit Eliza oh that went too fast but never mind I'm now going to try running the speaking Eliza speaking so it should use the eSpeak thing and um, it, it may slow it down a bit so it says that before good day what is your problem and I'll ask I want to know if you can use eSpeak how could we make a robot know if we can use eSpeak well its grammar is not very good um, and I'll type one more thing I would have to program you to know. Why do you say you would have to program me to know? Well, I think I'm going to leave that now. So that uh, works, and uh, if you don't have eSpeak on your system, you should be able to get it in um, in Fedora. I just use Jump install eSpeak. In one of the Debian systems, you'd probably have to use apt hyphen get eSpeak. Right, now there's another demo that can be used to check that everything works. Uh, that's the SimAgent demo, and that runs uh, the uh, SimAgent toolkit and creates various windows and runs some s simple simulated agents. So now let's just see if that works. So dot slash SimAgent demo and I haven't uh, tested this to see if it all fits in this little window that I'm using for the recording but let's just try it anyway well it seems okay so we get a control panel here which I'll just move right in and we can see there's a delay of 30 so it's going fairly slowly if I right click it's slowing things down a bit more uh, there are two agents, a red one on the right, which two agents here, which I'm going to move. And uh, when I move the red one, it says, oops, forcibly moved. You may not see that. Uh, the blue agent is trying to get to the blue target, and the red agent is trying to get to the red target over there. And uh, they can have states, which are shown in these faces. Um, the states can be, I'm going to move the red agent while I'm moving it it gets surprised and it shows its state there and it said oops forcibly moved and that's why it showed it was surprised uh, the blue agent is now getting close to its target and it's very happy because you can see that and it says I now feel happy because target etc the red agent is glum as shown here because it's got these obstacles 
and it's veering. It says it's glum because of the things that are obstructing. It's managing to get round the obstacles to get in the, uh, to the target, and as it approaches, it suddenly sees a target close by and gets happy. But I can be mean and grab it and move it, and then it gets surprised. And if I let go of it over there, it'll stop being surprised and just be glum. No, that's neutral rather than glum. It just hasn't got anything close by. It says I now feel neutral because nothing's seen. And uh, very soon it says I feel glum because it sees the obstacles. But I can move the target. Whoops, I um, don't know quite what happened there. I seem to be moving only the label for the target. I've never seen that happen before. But anyway, the red thing now goes in a different direction and now it's happy because it's came, come close to its target. And I can uh, move the blue thing away from its target and then it um, will go towards it and get happy. It's now happy again. If I move them both a long way away from their targets, uh, the red one's there, the blue one's there, I can then reduce the delay here by left clicking, it's going down, they'll go faster and faster, and then they go very fast. Well, the blue thing's now jammed, so I'll have to. I think I'm just. Oh, right, I moved it and it went round. So let's kill all of this. Uh, we can pause the demo, kill the windows, kill the panel, and type Control C to exit Poplog. Um, I can check that it's got. Um, XVED, the uh, Poplog editor working by typing XVED and that seems OK, although the window doesn't all fit on so I'll make it smaller. And because it has motif it's got these little buttons there, although I personally don't use them much and it's also got a scroll bar, I just use the function keys, but some people like to see these things. So if I press the Enter key, which is in the extreme right of the keyboard, and I type Teach Eliza gives me another window which went off to the right and provides information about the ELISA program, but I'm not going to go through any of that. The main thing is that um, if you have examples of code in a teach file, you can run them in the teach file, as explained in another tutorial. So I'm going to quit this with Escape Q. And um, there are a few other things to be said. Um, I was able to run XVED because I had set up my environment. Um, if I hadn't done that, I'd have had to type poplog XVED, and that would still work. Um, quit. To make it unnecessary to do that, I have to see what the poplog command does. And the command has been put in cd slash user local bin ls minus l poplog. So you can see it has put in a link to uh, the bin directory of the poplog system in which there's a poplog.s8 because it's a shell command. And when you run that it sets up some environment variables and then if you run it with an argument it um, runs that argument with the environment. So you can forevermore run poplog by typing things like poplog uh, prolog if you want to run poplog prolog and it starts up poplog prolog um, or poplog comma lisp which is poplog c lisp and it does that um, but to save having to type the poplog uh, bits every time you can in your source in your startup file give a source command. For example, if you're using bash, which I don't I use TCS TCSEH, -E but if I were using bash, I could then do source slash user local bin poplog. And then that says I've set everything up and that means I can now type uh, things like prolog without having to first gives the poplog prefix. Um, that's just a little wrinkle. Let's see some more of what happened. If I go into 
um, I'm going to come out of the bash theme. I prefer the prompt that I get from TCCA. So I can go into the poplog directory and explore a bit. cd slash user local poplog current poplog. I could have done that by typing uh, cd dollar use pop takes me to the same place because use pop is an environment variable that's set up by that script if I look at what's in there ls minus l there's a bin directory that has those uh, some scripts and the demos that I had before there's um, a, an install directory with a whole lot of scripts that are used during the install thing. There's some documentation files on changes, um, a record of when the system was rebuilt and so on, the copyright notice. There are some uh, Linux man files which are actually copied into the user local man directory. So if I type man uh, pop11, I'll get that summary of what pop11 is. Um, but most of the guts of Poplog is inside oh, there's a, the little user guide which is also available in the HTML file uh, which is also accessible via the web uh, most of the guts of Poplog is in the pop directory so I'll do cd pop and in there if I do ls minus l there are a number of things which for now I'll ignore main thing is there are several documentation directories. There's help and then there's teach and there's ref and those three help teach and ref have a lot of documentation on poplog in general and the pop11 system and the editor. There's also a subdirectory for prolog and that's called plog. ls monitor plog shows you what's in there there's a help and teach directories and some source directories uh, and program files. I could do the same for common lisp, ls minus l c lisp. Uh, sorry, it's lisp. C lisp is the startup command. So there's a ref directory and a help directory and various program files. And similarly for poplog ml, ls minus l p ml the source directory, a help directory, a lib directory. <coughs> In the packages directory there's a lot of extra stuff for teaching and other things, CD packages. So um, for example the, for Emacs users who don't want to use the VED uh, editor there are files that convert Emacs so that it will be very much more convenient for poplog users than the raw Emacs. Um, there's a simple Breitenberg vehicles simulation in there but some of the important stuff is in the teaching subdirectory so a lot of extra tutorials on um, artificial intelligence and introductory programming in addition to the main teach files in the main poplog directory um, and there are other utilities uh, one of the important things is the uh, SimAgent Toolkit which was used for that demo of the Red and Blue Agents. That has a, a subsystem which is pop rule based, PRB, which as you can see here is a link to a PRB subdirectory of NewKit and NewKit, which I'll go into, has two main things. There's the PRB, the pop rule based system, and the sim which is the sim agent extensions and there's a lot of stuff in there for AI programming and um, the online video tutorials already have a little demo of how the user can use a uh, teacher can use s some of the facilities to set up a micro world for students to work in and I shall add some more tutorials later um, there's um, also a PopVision library that comes from David Young at Sussex University which has a lot of uh, uh, tools for analyzing images and tutorial files showing how you can do that. Perhaps I'll show a tiny subset. So if I run Pop11 and then I can say um, 
users pop vision that gets the pop vision library I can now type teach rc array which I happen to know is one of the teach files I won't use xped so it'll fit in this window and this has a lot of information which I'm going to skip most of uh, but one of the important things is you have to compile some libraries so I'll mark all that with the F1 key down to the bottom with F2 key type control D so it's compiled all that and then there are three lines here which I'm going to just compile one is it gets another library for processing files which are in the um, Sun Rest file uh, format so there's a, an image here which has a dot rest at the end and sun raster file is used to come to um, uh, read that in and process it and it's assigned to the variable image image was declared there so we now have that image file and we're going to use RC new window to create a window to display it so it's come over there and we there's a lot more you could do which I'm going to skip set up the coordinates for that window I typed escape D on that line and now I can run this RC array command with that image and a lot of other things which I'm not going to explain and up comes the picture and there are lots of things you can do to pictures you can transform them in various ways you can scale them and then you can start looking for structure in them and David Young's tutorials introduce a lot of information about that anyway that's what you get as part of the poplock system um, this image processing stuff uh, includes some C programs so let's just take a look at that I mean where am I I'm in the packages new kit directory so I'll go up down upper level and down to pop vision and that has um, as many of the others has a help teach and some other things the important thing is that there's a lib directory and you can see in here that there are some .c files and corresponding .p files the .c files are written in c .p or pop11 and uh, all of these c files can be compiled and put into built into libraries um, and if I type du it shows that there's a bin linux directory which I'll go into ls minus l and there are all these dynamically loadable versions of the C files in fact they were compiled and and um, uh, put into these libraries uh, quite a long time ago but they still work and those can be used then to uh, run the image processing commands that are provided in those libraries anyway that's just one among very many different kinds of tutorial uh, material that comes with the poplog package let's just take a, another look at what was actually downloaded cd slash user local pop uh, log files so that's the stuff I explicitly fetched and then I ran the get and install script and that created the v15.65 directory and what you can see here is that all the stuff I've just shown you came out of this compressed tar file which it downloaded which was 16.9 well about 16 and a half megabytes when that was unpacked into slash user local poplog if I type du minus s in there that came to about 78 megabytes and that was a result of unpacking this file but also building the saved images so for instance if I go into pop lib psv sorry I have to cd current poplog pop lib psv ls minus l so these were the saved images there's the startup which is used for running pop 11 and then the xfed for running the multi-window editor prologue ml 
and this and you can see that this added about 6.9 megabytes there are other saved images you can create for instance um, I can create um, a saved image to run a demo mkg blocks so that's compiled some stuff and added the gblocks.psv thing which I can run by typing pop11 plus gblocks and uh, it asks if I want xved I'll say yes and um, that creates uh, an image which I'll bring up and it invites me to type help so I'll type help in this window and it gives examples of things I can type in like put a green block on a blue block put a block on the table onto a blue block where is a small blue block so I will just bring this image file up so here are all the six blocks big blue, small red, little green big red, big green, small blue and that thing's a hand so if I go to uh, where is the small blue block it passes it and says it's a question with the word where and various other things which are shown more clearly if I click on continue so we now get this graphical display of the parse tree where is the small blue block and it shows the question has these various parts the locative where the verb to be and then there's a noun phrase the small blue block if I click on continue again it l finds an interpretation of it it says where is the something a is a block a size is small color of a is blue and if I click on that again it interprets that as asking for the location of small blue which is a name it has for the thing which has the size small and the color blue and if I click on continue it interprets that command as locate small blue and then it says that block is on the large green block um, and I can give a command put the small blue block on the big blue one and it has passed that and this shows the pause tree as a list of lists of lists but I'm going to show it graphically so it says put the small blue block on the big blue one and uh, you can see it says this is a sentence which is an imperative which is just a verb phrase with the verb put and then there's a noun phrase the small blue block which is a thing to be put and then there's a prepositional phrase saying on and another noun phrase the big blue block saying where it's to be put so if I click on continue it interprets that as put there and produces these two descriptions and it finds that there's, that's unambiguous put the small block called small blue and the block called big blue I click on continue and it's going to it's made a plan moves small red to small green and moves the small blue to the big, big blue so it had to remove the small red because that was in the way of putting the small blue on top of the big blue uh, if I click on continue the hand goes along I have to move all of this back into the visible area um, hand goes down and grasps the red block lifts it up goes along goes down puts it on the green block lets go goes up goes along goes down to the blue block grasps it picks it up goes along to the, the right and it goes down and lets go and then it says done and there's a commentary on what it was doing so it had made a detailed plan that went through it and all of that is in this gblox thing so I'm now just going to quit this so that illustrates some of the things you get if you download poplog there's a lot more and the online uh, video tutorials will uh, show you some of that so if I come to um, uh, this thing and type in here poplog video tutorials we should get the website 
Uh, it's, I guess um, they're not yet um, known to Google, but I'll go back to the free poplog uh, things. So I'll go back and um, back and back, and I know where they are in here because I can go to the CAS AI subdirectory. Yes, yeah. and uh, Firefox remembers that I previously asked for that. So there's a whole lot of demos in here, and uh, that includes demos on use of the editor and so on. Um, but I'm not now going to go through any of that because I have taken long enough with this tutorial. So I'll now end this.